Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong, I'm a professional engineer, and we will be going over culvert sizing. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a tool inside of AutoCAD to help you design your culverts. Let's dive into it. I think the first thing that we need to go over is the method that we are going to use. So there's multiple methods that you can use to size culverts. One method is called the rational method, which you may have learned in school. It's a widely used hydrologic formula for estimating peak stormwater runoff from a specific area. The formula is expressed as Q equals CIA, where Q represents the peak runoff flow rate in cubic feet per second. C is the rational coefficient, also known as the runoff coefficient, which represents the portion of rainfall that becomes runoff. It varies dependent on the type of surface, if you have asphalt, grass, or soil. Then I is the rainfall intensity in inches per hour for a given storm event. It is often derived from rainfall data or local rainfall intensity charts. Last but not least, we have A is the drainage area in acres that contributes to the runoff. Now let me kind of just pull up a diagram here. So this is what we're cooking with right now. We are going to be using the rational method to determine a flow. And once we determine the flow, we can actually start sizing our culvert because when you're sizing a culvert, the two most important things that you're looking for is number one, capacity. Capacity. So the culvert should be sized to handle the expected flow of water without causing any sort of flooding or excessive ponding. So we definitely need to start with determining the peak flow rate from our drainage area. And once we do that, then we can start matching a specific culvert size to our flow rate. Number two is the velocity. So you also want to consider the velocity of the water flowing through the culvert. High velocities can lead to erosion and other issues. Typically, engineers aim for a velocity within a reasonable range to avoid the problems. Typical range you might see anywhere between two to seven feet per second. Always consult with your local jurisdiction on what you are allowed to do. I know. So the rational method should be a refresher for you guys, but I definitely wanted to walk through it. So now that we have our refresher, let's get right in into AutoCAD. So here we have a culvert going under this driveway here. This is for a commercial site. Right now we have an 18 inch RCP. RCP is reinforced concrete pipe. I just want to double check and make sure that this guy has enough capacity. Now the first place where we'll start is we definitely need the drainage area for this culvert. So I'm going to start at the center line of the road and I'm going to keep walking through the center line of the road because I know that that that's where the road is crowned and that's where water will be draining from. Let me go over all the way to here. So I know somewhere here water is being captured. It's also running off from this sidewalk here. So let me make sure the sidewalk is captured. Also, if you don't know about this nifty command in AutoCAD, uh, if you're drawing a line like this and you're there to the last endpoint, you can do C, enter, and this line closes. I'm going to thicken this up so we can all see it. You can do P edit. I'm going to click this line. I'm going to press W for width. And now it's going to ask me for a new width. I'm going to do five just so we can really see this drainage basin. So there we have a drainage basin and I'm very interested in how large this is. So here we can see if we type in properties in our command box, we can get an area and this area will be in square feet. Now I really need to convert it to acres because the rational method is very strict on on the units that you use. So if you didn't know about this, you can go up here to your properties and there's a calculator and I'm going to divide this by the conversion between square feet and acres. And then I can press enter. We are dealing with a drainage area of 0.58 acres. Now to be just conservative, I think I'm just gonna around for simplicity. So I'm gonna say that our drainage basin is roughly 0.6 acres. So going back to the rational method, we're, we've already nailed down one item that we have here. So we know that we are dealing with 0.6 acres here. Now the rest is really actually pretty straightforward. So the intensity inch per hour, which is dependent on the type of storm event, we actually know this from our stormwater manual for the county. And I don't want to get into what county this is, but this is how you get your information. So for instance, in Florida, we always consult with the county for a stormwater manual. Sometimes you can use the FDOT, which is the Department of Transportation manuals. They have the intensity curves in there. I already know that the intensity for this site is eight inches per hour. 
So we have the intensity. And now last but not least is the C factor. Now we can get really detailed if we want with the C factor and we can do what's called a land use calculation, which means with all of this basin that we have here, we can split up the amount of pavement that we have, the amount of pervious that we have. We can get a cumulative C factor and be very, very specific. But for this scenario, I'm just going to quickly walk through this calculation because I really want to show you guys really just how to use the express tools in the program. So for simplicity, I know that the higher the C factor, the more conservative. So for an instance like this, I can definitely tell that it's about half pavement and half pervious. Again, all this area within here between the sidewalk and pavement will be pervious. So I'm going to just go ahead and use that assumption. Given that assumption, I'm going to use a C factor. Maybe I'm a little bit conservative. Maybe, maybe I'll do 0.7. So now since I have all my values, I can actually do the calculation. So let's multiply. So I'm going to do 0.7 times 8 times 0.6. So I got 3.36 and that will be feet cubed per second. So again, I really just like rounding. This is all for a preliminary culvert sizing anyway. So I'm gonna round to four CFS. So that is what we are experiencing from this drainage area. Four seems low, but that's actually quite a bit of uh, milk jugs that are running through this pipe here. Now let me show you guys what tool I like to use in AutoCAD to begin sizing that culvert. And again, there are millions of programs out there that you can use to size pipes, but I'm gonna show you AutoCADs. So if you go up here to the Analyze tab, you have a, a design tool right here where we can go to Launch Express. And what Launch Express is, is Hydroflows Express. And you can use this to size culverts, ditches. Let's actually dive into here. Now, if we forgot what Manning's equation looked like, I'm going to go up to here. So Manning's equation, Q equals 1.49 over N, which N is the Manning's roughness coefficient, while A is the cross-sectional area of the pipe. R is the hydraulic radius, which is the ratio of the cross-sectional area over the perimeter all to the two-thirds and then last but not least slope so i'm not going to dive into i'm not going to dive into the specifics of manning's equation that can be for another video but i just wanted to let you guys know that that is what express is using and that's why it is asking for manning's n so now that we have a little briefer on Manning's equation, let's fill out some of the other stuff here. I'm going to skip this embankment here. I want to look at the calcs. So it looks like we have a couple of different items here. We can either use, you know, a crown tailwater, normal uh, and critical. You know, what I usually do is I usually like to just set my tailwater. And I love that there's a diagram here with, with setting the the tailwater. In this case, you know, a good assumption to use for the tailwater is your design storm stage of this pipe. You know, we had to do a stormwater model to understand the staging within this ditch that we have. Based on our stormwater model, I know that the stages got up to as high as eight, elevation eight. That's what I'm going to be entering in the tailwater. I'm going to enter in eight feet. Now, remember that cubic feet per second that we measured uh, previously, we derived four CFS, so that's going to be our maximum that we put in here. The minimum can be zero, and we can do an increment of one feet. And all this is going to do is it's going to calculate it out into increments. Last but not least, we have the embankment. So here's the embankment. Think of that as our driveway here. So our driveway is serving as an embankment. Uh, some of our grades for our driveway, if I hover over our FG, is you can actually see it there 10.8. We're roughly at 10.8 eight here or I'm going to say our embankment is roughly 50 feet. We have an embankment of roughly 50 feet top width. So I'm going to say 50 and our top elevation was around 10.8. Then last but not least, we needed a crest width, crest length. So enter the length of the embankment crest used as the weir crest elevation for overtoppling flow. In this case, it was a little bit longer because here's our embankment. We have a few more feet until we get to the pipe inverts. So just for this analysis, I'm gonna do something just slightly larger. I'm gonna say 70. 
And then now it looks like that we have everything we need to understand if this culvert is sized appropriately. So I'm gonna go hit run. Now, voila, we know it's calculated because it actually showed a diagram and it showed some of the calculations down here. And notice how it did increments of one CFS all the way up to 3.6. But yeah, this is really cool. So it showed in the max condition what this HGL gets up to. So I can tell right now that this pipe is sized accordingly. However, I'm going to check a few things. A few things I'm gonna check is definitely the velocity. So I'm looking through the velocity here of the downstream and the upstream, and it looks like we're pretty good. We reached as high as 4.26, which I know in the county that I'm working in, our max velocity is around 10 feet per second. So this is actually really good here. So again, I'm looking at the capacity and then the velocity. The capacity is clearly fine. Even with our tailwater that we inputted, we are doing fine here because this culvert is not overstaging too high uh, in this model here. Secondly, our velocities aren't too high. They're not above the county requirements. And that's honestly a, about it. There are a, a few you know, things that I would do. Maybe I would try to examine some different inverts. Maybe we can try to reduce this pipe to 15 inches. So let's see if that makes it easy enough for us to do. Do 15. And again, it's still all working out for us. So these are the couple of iterations, you know, that we can do. So that's all I have for today. I really wanted to show you guys the tools that we can use in AutoCAD to help us size culverts. I hope you learned a little bit about the rational method and Manning's equation to help us size a culvert. In later videos, we can use other software that may be more available to you if you don't have AutoCAD, and maybe we can even do some hand calculations, which I really love to do. If you found this video helpful at all, please hit the subscribe button, give it a like, and please comment below if you are interested in any other topics. My goal is to help civil engineering students alike learn more about the land development industry. I will be making more videos on AutoCAD, WaterCAD, StormCAD, ICPR, construction, plans. I mean, we're going to really dive into the nitty gritty of all those. Also, if you are a student and you're looking for a little bit of motivation, I am a self-published author. My book is called Boundless, Choosing a Mindset for Lifelong Growth. It can be found on Amazon in the description link. But that's all I got for tonight. I hope you guys learned something new and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.